Hi, Nick Smeary here with Riverstone Fifth Wheels, and we're gonna give you a little bit of a plant tour. So a lot of you like the first one we put out, wanna go a little more in depth this time. Um, so everything we build starts with the foundation, right? Whether it's a house or an RV, and our foundation is gonna be the strongest in the industry. So we're gonna start with a 12 inch I-beam frame. So a lot of guys are gonna use a 10 inch I-beam. You're gonna see a 15 inch stacked steel frame out there from some competitors. Structural I-beam is gonna be the strongest. The reason you have to go 15 inch on tube is the tube is not as strong. Um, it's an easier frame to build. We don't feel it's as good of a frame to, to hold up for the consumer. You know, we've gone as far as adding gussets in your axle hangers, strengthen that area up. It's something you are seeing a little more out in the industry. We try to stay ahead of what other people are doing. We want to make sure we're one of the guys at the top setting the trends. You know, one thing you won't find, but at one other competitor in the entire industry is an all steel upper deck. So this is actually one of our smaller upper decks. You know, our actual Riverstone Reserve product is gonna have a little aluminum in the upper deck, but our regular Riverstone, our Riverstone Legacy stuff, it's gonna be all steel. Most competitors, you see one propane tank here, it's on a slide out tray with the second one behind. It's because their steel comes down right here. Ours is gonna come back as far as that upper deck is. Some units, uh, this is actually our shortest one, some units will go three feet further back. So what that's gonna do is take all your road stress you're feeling on this front point, it's gonna disperse it over a bigger area of the frame. It's gonna be stronger going down the road, it's gonna be stronger for the life of the trailer. Um, as our frame comes in the door, we're gonna put our road armor underbelly in it. It's actually a plastic paneling. It's a molded panel instead of a wrapped underbelly. It's gonna allow you, if you ever have an issue, whether it's six months down the road or six years or 10 years down the road, if you have to pull a single panel down out of the campground to access that underbelly, you can, and then you can put it right back up like it came from us. It's not like the uh, wrapped underbelly where you're gonna have to cut a hole through it and try and tape it back together. In that area, you also noticed our spare tire carrier. That spare tire carrier will actually slide all the way out from under the unit on the off door, or actually on the door side, which would be the curb side of the road. So if you ever have an issue with the flat, instead of trying to crawl underneath the unit and get the drop down tire, that's on a system that'll slide completely out from underneath the unit. Odds are you're gonna be calling someone to help change the tire, but it makes life a lot easier if you're ever on the side of a highway with a flat tire, which we hope is not the case, as everything we run at Riverstone is gonna be on a 17 and a half inch rim with H rated tires. Uh, most of the competitors, you're gonna see a G rated tire. You probably notice the insulation as we're going through this frame. So our underbelly is enclosed. It's got fiberglass insulation along with a R38 radiant foil. If you see some uh, silver popping through there, that's the radiant foil. Then all these tanks have 12 volt tank pads on them. Um, they all also have true tank tank sensors on them now too. So those tank sensors are gonna be accurate to 5%. They are sonar instead of just the old probes that almost everyone in the industry is using, especially our competitors and towables. And we all know those probes just don't last. So we went ahead and went with the true tank tank sensors. As we're moving through the unit, we've got three 7K Dexter axles on this unit. It is one of our toy haulers. Um, standard on the toy hauler is gonna be 7K Dexter axles with this road armor suspension in there from Lippert. Now, if it's a dual axle trailer or tandem axle, you're gonna have two 8K Dexter axles on there with that road armor suspension. Now, all your Riverstone, Riverstone Legacies will have a 12 volt power cord reel. So this is a 50 amp power cord reel. If you get something in our reserve series, it is gonna be a detachable 50 amp cord. The next place we'd move to is gonna be our floor department. And our floors, just like your walls, your side walls, your front wall, your rear wall, you're gonna be aluminum studs. Those aluminum studs are gonna have rolled fiberglass insulation in them. Then we're gonna have 5 8 tongue groove plywood to top the floor off. On top of that, we're gonna have either Shaw rolled flooring or if you get our legacy package, we'll actually have Shaw, uh, the PVT, flooring, so that's gonna be actual vinyl plank flooring, so that is part of the legacy package. Uh, one thing you'll notice as we go through this plant, it's a new plant, it'll be two years in August. We've got a lot of hoist throughout this plant, so we're not moving floors by hand, we're not moving walls by hand, we're not doing any of that stuff. 
We're lifting these floors up with hoist. They need to be flipped over. It's done with the hoist. They're going to be set on the unit with the hoist. So everything is going to be done a little more precise, a little more delicate than some of the older plants out there. As we move into our cabinet shop area, we see this corner of the plant is all going to be the cabinet shop. So things are going to come in more or less mill length and our guys are going to build all the framing, build all your face frames, uh, take your end panels, actually build your islands. Um, you'll see we've got a bunch of the FSKs, FSKGs coming up. We've got all these kitchen islands coming through here. You got bedroom cabinetry, bathroom cabinetry. You know, we use real Corian countertops back here. Um, all your face frames, they're going to be stained or painted hardwood. It's not going to be a paper wrap product. There's not stapled together. It'll be pocket screwed together like you'd expect at your house. That's one place a lot of guys have hardwood cabinets you hear about. Well, it's the door. And then they're using paper wrap stuff for the styles where your hinges are actually holding on day to day. And nobody at their house is using a paper wrap lumber core product using real wood because that's what you need to stand up to day to day use. So once it's built in our cabinet shop, um, these guys are going to assemble the next day's production, a uh, day to a day and a half ahead of time, it's going to get set on the units here. So this is going to be the first unit tomorrow. You see everything's set in here. It's not installed yet. So this department, your floor is on the unit now. Your cabinet's starting to go in. You see hydraulic lines hanging out, some electrical hanging out. Any hydraulics or electrical that are running through the main area of the underbelly are already going to be installed. Your plumbing's already going to be ran through this floor that's getting ran through that floor. Um, now guys are going to actually start setting your interior walls and your cabinetry. So <clears throat> by the time it finishes here, all your interior walls are going to be set, all your cabinetry is going to be set, you see your steps are set, the raised decks are set. We'll flip around back here and this unit's got full hydraulics ran, the hydraulic lines have already been purged, uh, so your all your hydraulic slides, your hydraulic leveling jacks are already complete by this station. You're starting to see some plumbing out because we're by the plumbing mezzanine. So uh, we have a mezzanine standing next to us where all your plumbing, same thing as the cabinet shop, you've got cut lists to get a day or two days ahead of production. You're going to see they're going to start having appliances prepped from heaters, you know, um, to your actual plumbing getting installed in this area. So. <clears throat> By the time we move through this area, all your plumbing is going to be in there. Your plumbing, we've got Tough Pex plumbing. You know, Tough Pex is rated negative 28 degrees with water in it before it'll crack. So actually expand two to three times its size before it will crack. As we move into the wall department, this unit's fully finished through plumbing. You notice this pass-through storage is a little cleaner on this unit than the last one. Uh, so we've got our battery boxes, which will hold two 6 volt batteries or 12 volt batteries on each tray. These trays do slide all the way out. It's not fully attached in there yet so I don't want to pull on it and uh, pull it off of there. But this is a legacy so it's got our full unit water manifold in there so you've got individual shutoffs for the items in the unit. So we've got a your hydraulic pump is hidden under this little handy door here. So you ever have to check your fluid, you have to have your add fluid, um, it's an easy, easy add, easy check. Obviously, you're starting to see some pretty good structure on the unit. Um, see pressurized water line, so we can pressure the water line with air, cap them, make sure they'll actually hold pressure as they go through the line. As we move back here, this is our wall area. So this table is where they're actually going to build walls. So you see our walls, depending on the floor plan, are going to be anywhere from our, well, our shortest now are about 35 feet all the way up to 44, 45 footers. So we used to actually take fully built aluminum walls and lay them down on this table to act as a jig. Now we actually took vinyl flooring, mapped out our jigs, so we can lay all the aluminum out on here. Depending on the floor plan, you've got a left wall, a right wall for every single floor plan we build. So it makes life a little simpler. Uh, instead of moving those 45 foot walls around the plant and swapping them on the table, every left, every white for, for every unit. Now you can uh, line them up on these lines and then square them up before you actually start screwing and gluing everything together. So on our walls, you're gonna have Sikaflex glue, which holds at 475 pounds a square inch. 
and you're gonna have an L bracket. So we're gonna move over to a unit with a wall over here. You're gonna see these brackets are a 90 degree L bracket. It's gonna have two screws going into the stud, two screws going into the floor on every L bracket. And then it's also gonna be backed with that Sika Flex glue. So these brackets are actually screwed in. Um, the outside screw goes all the way down into the plywood as well. So when you're up here on the full floor, that's go a three inch screw going all the way down through the plywood and aluminum. Then these walls are gonna be attached up front. We'll see here in a few minutes. Um, but to compare this to a laminated wall, laminated wall is gonna be welded, right? And welds are great. The problem is when you weld some of these thinner gauges of aluminum, you have an opportunity to overheat the aluminum. You don't worry about the weld cracking, you worry about the aluminum next to the weld cracking. So a laminated wall, you have that. Going down the road, you're gonna have movement. Well, with that movement, you have an opportunity for a stiff weld to crack the aluminum next to it. These brackets are gonna give it a little bit of movement. You know, anybody that's towed a trailer knows you get some movement in that unit. When you're hitting bumps, you're going crosswinds, doing 65 with the crosswind, it's like you're taking the thing through a tornado on the road. Um, we feel this is a superior construction. When you look at what traditionally have been some of the premier high-end motorhomes and premier fifth wheels in the marketplace, at that real high-end level, we like to compete. It's hung wall, it's this type of construction. It's not welded construction. So that's what we base this off of and it has worked well for us here. Um, and this is the start of our three inch wall. Obviously it's got your interior decor board on it when it's put on the unit. Um, getting ready to put, get roofs put on in this station which is gonna tie everything together. Uh, and then we'll be about five, six stations up line. You'll see it get insulated and next to your skin will be glued on then. Um, as I mentioned before, you've got these screws up here going through your upper deck steel. So those screws are going through aluminum that is actually filled with wood as well. So there's a little more bite for that screw and then it's going into aluminum. As we move around the front of this unit, you're gonna see a couple of big bolt heads right here, carriage bolts. This bolt actually goes all the way through the steel with washers and nuts on the back side of it as well. So you got some serious bite going into that upper deck and then the entire wall is sitting on top of the floor and screwed down to the floor. So this wall isn't just hanging onto the side, it's actually sitting on the floor, which is carriage bolted into the frame. I mentioned that you'd be getting a roof on the unit to my right. On this unit, the roof's on it. You'll see it's a ducted. So it's insulated ductwork, it's eight inch ductwork, all radius corners. So you're gonna get good heavy airflow throughout the entire unit. It's all connected with return airs, it's all gonna be above the roof with all your ACs. You know, little things we try to do at Riverstone, and I'm not saying we don't have any shakedown or that we do things perfect, but we're always trying to push to be better. So we got to a point where we said, why are we getting so much shakedown on our ACs? We need to be better than what the industry average is, what the industry standard is. Nobody makes AC plugs. Every vent that we put on our roof, when we put the ductwork up there, we plug all the holes for the vents so that when this gets five stations down line and they're routing plywood holes out to do your ply, half inch plywood roof decking and go to put the ACs on, instead of all that sawdust falling down into your ductwork, it gets stopped by our plugs and vacuumed out instead of getting in. That way you don't have that first two months of use. Every time the AC turns on, you get sawdust blowing out your vents and you can't figure out where it's from. We saw a problem, we took it to production and the guys fixed it. So we've got a team out here that cares about the customer and the product they're putting out there. And when we take a problem to them, they solve it, which it's a really nice asset to have for us. So we are on the electrical mezzanine. So you can see a lot of barrels of wire up here, a lot of reels of wire. So part of why you see so many barrels of wire, we use the Firefly integrated uh, control system. So that integrated Firefly control system has a bunch of different lighting zones on it. Rather than running all the same colors of 12 volt wiring to all those lighting zones, we run every lighting zone in a different color. So if you ever have an issue, it's easy to find those wires. You're not searching putting your clamps on every single wire in there to figure out what zone it is. You know, there's some little things we try to do different. Running down your roof, we run all your 12 volt wiring down one side of the roof and all your 110 wiring down the other. So if you do have an issue in a short, 
when you're pulling a light out and grabbing those wires, they're gonna be right by the light. We're gonna say, go down the door side to look for your 110, go down your off door side to look for your 12 volt. At least make it a little simpler on guys. You know, everyone talks about that rat nest up under the underbelly. And some days I'll be honest, I look at ours and think, man, what are we doing here? And then I go on to a lot when I'm visiting a dealer and I look at all the competitive products and there's nobody that has the clean of an electrical area as we do. So now we're gonna go back down to the actual units and you'll see some of the drops. So one thing that's gonna keep coming up is our wall construction. Being a hung wall, building the wall in-house, we have full control over how the electricals ran. So you're gonna see a lot more 110 outlets on exterior walls. With that wool insulation going up the wall, you can put it over wiring. You can put it over the back of an outlet. So instead of having to have all your outlets on interior walls, we've got them on exterior walls. And there's your 110 outlet and your USB outlet. Now you can put batten insulation right over that. You know, if we need to move an outlet, we can do it. We don't have to coordinate with a lamination facility across town to move a wire on something. Our guys in our electrical department are the ones that can do it. So that's one nice thing about our production levels. So this big, beautiful plant, we run four units a day. Yeah, we'd like to beat up five a day. We're not a product that's trying to get to 25, 30 fifth wheels a day in production. So that allows us when we have, even if it's not necessarily an issue, we see, hey, we need to start adding outlets here. Hey, we don't like the radio we're using. Let's switch that radio. You know, we like to keep things simpler for the customers and do that once a year. But if something's an issue, we have the ability to change it tomorrow morning. We don't have to keep using the same thing. We don't have a run of 100 units coming in a row. We don't have a run of 40 units coming in a row. Our average run size is about 10 or 12 units. Um, so that makes it really nice for us, makes it really nice for production. If they find something that they're seeing an issue with, they bring it to us, we can try and fix it. If our customers find something there's an issue with, they can fix it. As you walk through this plant, we've got all kinds of coworkers on the Facebook sites and the different forums, whether it's guys that work out here in the plant, us up in the office, constantly monitoring and looking for things where we can improve. Because the goalpost is always getting pushed, especially in today's world with all the forums online. And we want to make sure we're the ones pushing the goalpost, not the ones following the goalpost. Um, so this unit is technically in a void on our line where there's no real work being done on it. But if something needs to be finished up from electrical, they'll come over here and do a few things. Um, we do have a few void spots online so that if there's a shortage somewhere, there's an opportunity in that line to catch it up where guys aren't working over top of each other. Also running four units a day, our units are online for six days. So with six days in the plant, if there is a shortage or something missing, there's a good opportunity for it to be caught up before it goes out the door. So these plants that run 15, 20, 25 fifth wheels a day, if they run out of a fridge and they run a day of production without a fridge, they'll have an entire day out the building that they have to now pull slide outs out, take fridges apart to add a fridge into, or they have 20 or 25 units that made it all the way through their line without a radio, then all I have to have radios installed out in the field or air conditioners. You know, the nice thing, most shortages, we're gonna be able to catch up online. Do we have some out there? Yeah, of course. Usually look at it and it's a cabinet door. You know, we don't wanna install a damaged cabinet door that got damaged for some reason in here. And, uh, or if it didn't get damaged, maybe it was shipped short, whatever the case, it's usually a cabinet door or something minor like that. Not saying we're always perfect. Uh, as many of you know that have been here, you've seen us run short of some other items as well. Here we are, we're in the scaffolding where the roof decking is gonna be installed. So you're gonna have half inch plywood decking on the roof. That plywood decking is gonna go over five inch rafters. So those rafters are radius rafters. Um, so the rain, you know, any water will roll off the sides. So the roof back in the roof scaffolding, a few stations back, we do build in eight foot sections. I don't know if I hit on that earlier. Um, so instead of trying to put a 40 foot roof on, we're carrying eight feet at a time, putting them on. They're built a day ahead of time. They're left sitting upside down because you're gonna have glued and pin nailed your interior decor boards on your roof to keep them from coming down. So we let, let that glue cure overnight with the roof scaffolds or with the, with the rafters upside down with the eight foot sections of roof. Um, inside the unit's looking like a 
unit all of a sudden. You've got most of your electrical done. You'll see we wait to do TVs, fireplaces, a few of those items so we go a little further down line. You know, the actual wiring's done and we just don't want to take the risk of uh, damaging them as little as possible anyways. So it's got ceiling fans, it's got the lights in it. You know, your outlets are all done. It's getting ready to get that roof insulated with that fiberglass insulation. You're gonna have radiant R38 foil wrapped all the way down the front, all the way down the back, one piece. Um, you know, just little things, try and keep guys as fresh as they can out here. Instead of just having a bunch of bundles of plywood sitting on that mezzanine we were on earlier, we got a little scissor lift over here. As guys are taking pieces of plywood off, that'll raise up so they're not bending down and picking the bottom half of that up off the ground. Just save a little bit of energy. They're gonna carry their plywood, deck this whole thing in half inch marine grade plywood. Um, once that's done, the unit's gonna get rolled down the tracks over to here. And we're gonna put your exterior skin on. Um, so you'll see these clamps, gonna hold your big void areas. So those are actually gonna stay on there for a few hours um, while that Sika Flex starts to cure. So you're gonna see hand clamps around some of your baggage doors. Other areas, you're gonna see where there's, actually take a piece of trim and screw it in here to hold it down while it's, <clears throat> while that glue's starting to cure. So same with around your slide outs, you've got these nice brackets and then those are gonna be covered up with your actual slide out trim and uh, your slide out max. So that's all gonna be, end up being screwed down later anyways. You know, this unit already has its rear cap on. This would be where they put rear caps on. That's why we got a couple big racks of them back here. Then we've got our gel coat exterior. So one thing people talk about your exterior wall and whether it's Luan or whether it's a laminated wall. So here's our true gel coat wall. There's actually a 45 foot mold. They spray that gel coat material on. It's not a rolled piece of fiberglass that's glued and laminated to Luan. That gel coat is wet and they take the Luan and it is put right on there. Um, it's one of the real only automated processes I've seen in the RV industry. It's really pretty impressive. Um, that gel coat, they can scan a barcode on this wall and they can tell you exactly how much material was used on that mold. So they can come in, they can look at it after every run and know were they using enough material, not enough material, so that there's not a problem with the wall in the future. Doing it with the wet gel coat actually allows the gel coat to get into the Luan instead of just gluing it to the Luan. So that's gonna get rid of almost all of your delamination that you would see. That's the big benefit of a hung wall. So then this wall, all the studs were glued with Cicaflex and then this wall is lifted up with the hoist and it was put against that on the Cicaflex. And the beauty of that, people don't like to talk about moisture in the wall, they don't like to talk about glue failures in a wall. Well, there's no glue in that skin to fail. And the glue that is on that stud, it's not laminated, it's not pinch rolled, it's not vacuum bonded. So if there were to ever be a glue failure, you can actually remove your interior decor board re-glue that stud just like it was at the factory, put something to brace it on the outside, the next day it's exactly like it was from here. Not something you should have to plan on having happen, not something we want you to have happen, but the reality is someday someone will have a glue failure. And when that happens, we want it to be repairable, not replacing the whole wall, not cutting a section out and trying to bondo it back in there. Coming out of the wall department, got a beautiful Decorator White 39 RBFL. One thing I wanted to hit on, you're probably asking yourself why are they putting cardboard in here? So that's actually called a foam core. So it's a foam core board we put behind the aluminum. So it's not just a piece of cardboard, it's just lined in paper. Um, but it's just to help hold the, uh, it's gonna help hold your skirt metal in that area. Just give it a little extra support behind it around those holes. So got your, we call it S-lock, -S but your trim lock for your skirt metal going on here. So in this metal department, we're gonna get skirt metal, we're gonna get baggage doors, we're gonna get some of your windows on this next station. So one thing you'll notice about Riverstone is we try to do everything a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, a little bit better than our competition. So the skirt metal, 
It's not an 024, it's not an 030 metal, it's an 040 metal. Um, it doesn't make all the difference in the world, but all these little things add up to make all the difference in the world. You know, we add a little kink to it. That's going to give you a little extra stability. So running down the road, the skirt metal isn't going to flap nearly as much as that flimsy stuff that a lot of guys are using. I say a lot of guys, not every guy. There are some guys that are on par with us on some materials. Very few are on par from top to bottom of what we do. As we move around this unit in metal, we're going to come to one, getting ready to take a front cap. So this unit is getting ready to get its Dicor Diflex 2 TPO roof membrane. And then after the membrane goes on, it's going to get its front cap put on. Full fiberglass front cap. Still working on some type of a, uh, an assist for installing the front caps. You know, we actually had one designed and put in to lift the cap for the guys and install it on the unit. We just couldn't quite get it working right. Um, so we're back to ground zero on that, but our guys have been installing caps for a long time and never had an issue with one. You'll notice all our baggage doors are nice, extra thick doors. We don't use any of the thin ones. I know you see more and more people using them. Well, we've been using them since day one. Here to notice midship turn signals as we walk down the unit. It's nice when you're 44 foot 10 inches like this unit is from tip to tail. Let people know when you're coming over on the highway. Here to notice the Truma AquaGo Comfort Water Heater has been installed. So there are some guys that have optioned those. Uh, we were the first guys to do as a standard in a towable. Right here, normally be covered up. We're pretty good about putting some easy access access panels in. So the brain box for your bed lift and our toy haulers is right here. It takes four screws to take that access panel off and your brain box is right there. We try not to bury things where they're unreachable so that if you ever do have an issue in the field, you can actually get in there and work on something. A mobile tech can get in there and work on something. You're not tearing half the unit apart to get to a brain box. So once your compartment doors have been installed, your baggage doors, your entrance door, your roof's been installed, the unit's gonna move down the line into our slide out department. So I think slide out's a pretty interesting department. From that wall of the factory to here, the slide out box goes from a floor to a completed box. So a lot of guys won't build a full wall for the exterior slide out wall. One thing with our three inch walls, you'll notice how well they're, all our windows are trimmed out with wood on the inside when we get up here in a few stations. Part of that is because we build a three inch wall. Most of our competitors are gonna build a two inch wall. That two inch wall is gonna have a nice easy snap in trim ring. We have to box all that out. Well, we do the same thing on our slide outs. That's why you see the same window accents on our slide outs. That's a three inch wall. That's a solid wall. Most guys are gonna be a two inch. Even if they're laminating it, they're still gonna be a two inch. Some guys are building an inch thick wall for their slide out box. Well, things are really starting to take shape on the unit by this point of the line. Uh, you will notice this one's got some different colored skirt metal. It's all gray on the outside. Anything you see with gray or different colored skirt metal, it's gonna be a painted unit. Uh, if it's non-painted, the exterior is gonna be all one color. It's getting decals. We've got one of those coming up in a few spots. So this is one of our toy haulers. It's fairly complete back here. It's missing the headboard, which is gonna close that top gap off. Um, bed's down, you're about 58 inches tall. It's 110 inches deep, 66 inches wide. Bed's got about 26 inch inches of travel. So you will be right about 84 inches with, with this bed lift up. Um, you know, on the rear end, we've got three lights. They will be getting a chrome ring around them after paint. But we throw a reverse light on. It's not necessary. Um, it's not needed. But it's nice when you're this big, people know you're coming back. Uh, it's nice for your rear view camera, if you have one, which we're prepped for on every unit. We do an optional four camera system. Nice to have a little extra light back there. And when we come into the unit, we'll hit our Firefly lights on, put the master on switch. Things are looking a little rough on the inside still. Um, you know, you've taken shape, you've got your ceramic tile backsplashes, you've got some of your appliances put into their holes by this point. Um, you know, we like to put the fridges in with the, before the slide outs go in. 
this fridge will fit out the door. You know, we're a 32 inch wide door. Without the handles on these brand new fridges, I believe you are 30 inches deep. The old style of fridge, you had to take the handle off to get that narrow. Now, if you take these doors off, you're only like 28 inches and we got a 32 inch door. Um, you're gonna see a lot of trim laying around. We won't go too in depth on this unit, but I wanted to show you how fast it goes from looking like a raw unit inside to being finished. And at this point, we're only five or six stations from rolling out the door. We're only about two or three from all the trim being up and it looks finished in here. So while we're starting to talk about trim, we're gonna pop up front here, just kind of walk through our trim area, give you an idea when I say all hardwoods, what I really mean. Window trims, stained hardwood. <clears throat> These are cover up your slide outs, your slide out toe kick trims, stained painted hardwoods. Uh, your boxes of slide out fascia, right? They're ordered per unit. That slide out trim work, stained or painted hardwood. This rack, You've got some wrap stuff. Your corner, inside corners for your wall board, um, some of your wrapped corners to go around some of your TV areas and black, some of your real thin flat battens to help trim some of the wall board stuff out. Paper wrapped. We go to your crown molding, stained hardwood. Um, your two inch crown molding, stained hardwood, painted hardwood. You've got some small door jam, stained, painted hardwood. Your big door jam, stained, painted hardwood. Um, <laughs> a lot of what you see is gonna be stained, painted hardwood. We bend down, we grab the corner blocks. The block goes in the corner of your slide out for your crown molding. It's a solid hardwood piece. You know, we even get these custom made curved pieces for the few, we've got two units that take a curved interior wall. Comes in a stained hardwood piece to go around that curved wall to match up your crown molding. We don't even get a fake foam piece made for that. So we've got a little paper wrap on some of your small trims, few little pieces of foam in the unit 95% of it, it's gonna be stained hardwood. All your major things, your end panels, your countertops, your, or your tabletops, your framework for all your cabinetry, all your cabinet doors, it's all gonna be stained, painted hardwood. Nice, bright LED light over your hitch. So this obviously has an air ride hitch on the front of this unit. A lot of the units you see are gonna have an air ride hitch that you see in stock places. Standard on Riverstone is gonna be a Rotoflex. On a reserve series unit, the standard is gonna be a solid steel hitch. We offer uh, upgraded Rotoflex on that. Every unit, whether it's a Riverstone, Riverstone Legacy, a reserve series, is going to be generator prepped. It's gonna have that generator box, it's gonna have your transfer switch, it's gonna have all your electrical done. Um, the generator is gonna be built into the Firefly system for your auto gen start. We run your LP lines into that compartment as well in our gen prep. On those LP lines, got a nice big LP compartment. Does not have the bottles yet, you will get two 40 pound LP tanks in this compartment. Everything we build at Riverstone is gonna have 40 pounders. Most of the competition, honestly everyone else I know of, 30 pound tanks. This unit has an optional exterior TV. It's gonna be a 40 inch entertainment TV built-in Bluetooth soundbar radio tuner. So we've moved up two positions in this production line. And in two positions, you've got all your crown molding, you've got your nice decorative beam, um, all your slide out trims up here. You see a bunch of cabinet doors and drawers being placed in the unit ready to install. The rest of your appliances are in here ready to install. Um, but the unit really starts looking complete here very quickly. We're gonna move another couple stations up on the line and then we'll talk a little bit more of the interior. 
On our way out, you'll notice this is one of those curved walls I was talking about there with the hardwood piece up top instead of a fake piece. On these appliance carts, you'll see a unit stage for tomorrow, Dyson vac, dishwasher, microwave, shower doors, mirror. So just like, so we've kind of hit going through the line, some of the other places, they're prepping a day ahead of time. You know, with appliances, we're not gonna pull 30 microwaves out of the box and 30 dishwashers out of the box to have a chance to damage. But at the end of the day, instead of coming in and first thing you're trying to unbox and get stuff prepped, we do that stuff at the end of the day. So when they're actually installing and hooking stuff up, everyone's fresh, right? It's gonna be the most efficient and it's gonna keep people in the best mood while they're working throughout the day, cause the least amount of damage. All right, so we've moved two more stations up the line. So by here, the interior is pretty well finished. You see your protective pieces have been taken off of your wood, off of your floor, off of your countertop. We do leave them on these steps. They're hardwood steps. It doesn't uh, take but a rock or two and a shoe to leave some marks on there, and we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, Obviously, we still have to get furniture. We still have some trim pieces to go and a few spots. But your unit's pretty well finished by this point. They're going to be checking propane systems. They're going to be checking appliances. They're going to be rechecking the water system. Kind of giving the full systems check on the unit in the next couple stations, you know, which is probably one of the most important things. As we go throughout the line, there's quality control all the way throughout the line. So we're catching things, and it's marked and noted in the different stations, so if there is an issue, whether it's rather than trying to catch everything at the end, things get caught along the way. Um, so we kind of have an idea of where our damages are coming from. Um, a lot of them are gonna be wrapped up and fully finished in these next couple of departments. So we're gonna pop ahead to the last unit online and I'll go a little more over the appliances that are in it and that type of stuff in that unit. So this is the last unit on our production line. It's going to get finished up in the morning. It's going to head out the door and go to paint. We'll go over the what happens in the return from paint here in a few minutes. But every unit that does go to paint comes back with a few items to finish up. So it is actually sitting on our scales right now. We have a tripod to put the front of the unit back on just like they were going down line on to get it on this front hitch scale. But every unit, when you look at the Vintag, you look at your title and it's got weights on it, those weights are off that exact unit. Every unit is weighed here and that's where the Vintag prints. So this unit's actually equipped with our optional Moride independent suspension. So it's, some would say axleless. I mean, you do still have torsion arms coming off these wheels we got gas shocks, you've got rubber suspension blocks. This has the Kodiak disc brakes on it as well. Um, this more independent suspension system has been a fairly popular option for us. Uh, every unit that we put this on will also go to Moride's facility and be laser aligned by them. They'll recheck the bolts on it, make sure everything's properly installed. Moride has repair shops across the country uh, to get them realigned if that needs to be done someday. Well, one thing you'll notice on some of our Riverstone floor plans, we use these Moride steps and these steps come right up over your tires. You know, in the past, a lot of your floor plan had to be designed around your door because you couldn't put your door over the steps or you couldn't put your steps over the wheels because you had to have that wheel well, the step well that went right into the, what would be our wheel well area here where it actually folds up underneath the door. Uh, we were one of the first guys that looked at these Moride steps, went standard with them and said, well, how creative can we get with floor plans now that our door can go anywhere on the unit, right? If we couldn't put the door here, we couldn't build this floor plan. As you will notice on this unit, there is a little more red tape than I would like. That, my friends, is white. So we are as hard as anyone on 
white interiors in our units. Um, white shows a lot of mistakes. Yep, not even mistakes, it just white hides nothing. So whether it's a nail hole has to be perfectly filled, where you splice crown molding, it's gotta be done perfectly. And our guys kick themselves in the butt all day long to make sure it's done right. That's why you're seeing so much tape in this compared to the last unit we were in. Um, that being said, I think our fit and finish is second to none in the industry. You're in this unit, it's got, it's everything's installed. You're pretty much done at this point. Now we're just gonna finish up some of those last items before it goes out the door and goes to paint. You've got sleeping sofas across from each other in this unit. You know, every, if it's a 67 or 70 inch sleeper sofa, we use the Easy Glide sofas that'll make beds across from each other. If it has a 90 inch sofa on a rear wall, it's gonna be a hide a bed sleeper. You know, our 60 inch power theater seats do not have a center armrest. They are 30 inch wide seats. Our 68 inch power theater seat we'll have an eight inch center council in it. Um, you know, we keep obviously stainless steel residential French door fridges, stainless steel microwaves. This one actually has the uh, standard 30 inch stainless steel microwave. We do offer a 30 inch convection microwave. You know, every Riverstone we build, Riverstone Legacy is gonna have a Fisher Payco dishwasher standard. Um, if you buy a reserve, that's going to be optional. We'll be prepped for it. Everything we build's got the nice big insignia stove. Four burner range with the 12,000 BTU burner. 3.6 cubic foot oven. You know, one thing we really like to do in our half baths, if a unit has a half bath, that is where we like to put your washer dryer. Everything that we build that's a Riverstone or a Legacy is gonna have a Splendid stackable true vented dryer, washer dryer. Um, a reserve is gonna be prepped for that, optional from the factory though. You know, everything's gonna have two Max Air fans with rain sensors on them. You know, you'll notice the black cabinets in the bathroom, black islands in the kitchen, whether it's a gray unit or a white unit, you're gonna have the black cabinet accents in the kitchen and bathroom. So black cabinet accents, the black hardware, the black faucets, in the bathroom you're gonna have black uh, black metal on the shower door. Um, you're gonna have black cabinets in the bathroom. You know, so we really tried to accent the white and the gray with black. Um, white and gray, honestly, makes it pretty easy where your accent is gonna look the same with both of them. I think we did a really good job of it not being too white, too bright in your face. You know, we kind of tried to make the windows all blend together with the black accents around your windows. You've got black windows, black trim around them. Um, I think we did a pretty darn good job in these units this year, and we seem to be getting pretty positive feedback. So this particular unit's got an optional cadet heater and a 39 RBFL. It's nice, recessed into the wall. In some units, uh, it is going to be a non-recessed can mount where it's mounted to the front of the wall. When you come into the bathroom, you're going to notice our shower for this year. So we've kind of upgraded the showers, gives you a more of a residential look in there. Still a nice firm fiberglass base. Um, you know, if you were to have some type of a crack or an issue in the shower, most likely place is going to be that base. And fiberglass is about as easy of a repair as there is on the market. In the bedrooms, you've got 72 by 80 inch king bed standard. It's a 10 inch memory foam mattress, um, nice multicolor headboard, accents all our colors well in here. We try to give you the biggest closet space possible in our units. You take a unit like this, we put two hanging bars in it, tops and bottoms. Your closet's where you're usually gonna find your King, My, King Max Wi-Fi router. Um, that's gonna be a router extender. You got a roof mounted antenna. So if you're in a campground with Wi-Fi, if you got bad signal in your unit, it's gonna amplify that signal, create your own more secure network in your unit with an amplified signal. Now this is a legacy, so it's got that Dyson vac in the closet. You know, if it's a non-legacy, it'd have a center vac under the steps in the kitchen.
And let's kind of go look at a unit that's come back from paint. And we will probably hit on a few things around that that I missed throughout the rest of the plant. So down here, you'll see some extra lights, an extra wall built here, a little separated. That's actually where every unit will be gone over when it comes back from paint. When I say gone over, they're going over the paint. So if it needs any extra buffing, uh, if there's any little touch up that needs done, it's gonna be done there. You know, I always say we're not afraid to send a unit back to paint if we were to have to. Knock on wood, I haven't had to do that in a long time. So we've got a really good paint shop that does every unit we build. So that's good for us. Once they're cleared through that department, they're gonna be brought into here. So once it comes back from paint, you still gotta caulk exterior speakers. You still gotta do some of the caulk around the slide outs. You still got to um, install some of the cameras. You still gotta install vent covers on the washer dryer, vent cover on the fridge, vent cover for the microwave, uh, the covers for the hot water heater. So there's a lot of little things that need done. Your awnings still need to be put on. Slide toppers, if it's getting slide toppers, those are gonna have to be put on. Some of the slide out seals, actually your bulb seals and your slide outs still need to be put in. The wiper seals are there, but not the bulb seals. So there is a decent amount of work to be done when they come back from paint, but you don't have to worry about overspray getting on your bulb seals now. You don't have to worry about the paint flaking off the caulk now. So that's the reason we do a lot of those items after the fact. Um, <clears throat> I'd put our paint up against anything in the industry that's not a true custom, custom painted unit. Um, I think we have some of the nice paint in the industry and I mean, we pay for it. That's why you see our paint price the way it is, but we try to be fair. We want to put a good product out to people. When you run our, your hand along our unit, and you go running along the other fifth wheels on the lot, it's not gonna feel as smooth. And it's because when we paint a unit, we do a double cut and buff. So that lines are actually getting cut and buffed twice to smooth them out. They're also doing a four times clear coat. So it is two clear coats, but each time they clear coat it, they do two layers of clear coat. Um, you know, as we're really wrapping things up here, I know there's some things we've missed throughout the line, whether it's talking about our quarter inch shackles or big thick. I mean, nobody in the industry uses a heavier shackle that's holding your axle, your equalizer, and your frame than we do. Nobody's using a bigger bolt. We've been using greasable, heavy duty shackles and bolts for so long, some of that stuff we forget to talk about. Um, because of that, we hope to see you guys at a dealership. We hope to hear from you guys at the factory. We hope to see you here at the factory. And ultimately, we hope to see you in a Riverstone someday. So we want to build the best product in the market. We feel that we do, and we want to continue doing that. So we constantly try to monitor online to hear what people want, see what people want, and try to keep up as quick as possible without jumping on trends before they're fully established or before they've been proven but we want to hear from you guys. We want to see you here and we hope you enjoyed our tour.